Over the past two months, we've reviewed every single trap hole card as well as every single mirror force, but one of the most highly requested additions to this series is reviewing all of the solemn trap cards. Now there's four counter traps that you're probably familiar with, and we're gonna be looking at those, but I also wanted to briefly look at both of the continuous trap cards that are technically part of this solemn series. Now I've mentioned before in these types of videos, these aren't really looking at archetypes. Uh, while the trap hole cards do have support, the solemn cards definitely don't have any support outside of generic trap support or generic counter trap support, but they don't really technically work with each other. They just happen to do similar things when we're talking about the counter traps. And then there's the weird continuous traps. We'll get to those in a second. Anyway, though, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the six different solemn trap cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm going to look at them from a competitive standpoint. None of these cards are super new, which means that we can look back at the history of the game and see how impactful these cards were or are right now. Anyway, let's jump right in. So the first one is Solemn Authority. This is one of the sort of weird continuous trap cards. This card says, activate this card by targeting one Asir monster you control. It cannot be targeted by other card effects while this card is on the field. Send this card to the graveyard during the second standby phase after activation. So this card's kind of strange. Uh, first off, its effect actually isn't very good. This suffers the same problem of a lot of cards like this. Uh, if you didn't know, this effect has to be used preemptively. You can't actually flip this in response to your opponent targeting one of your monsters that meets the criteria and then negate that effect. Uh, if it's already been targeted, this thing doesn't do anything, which means you have to flip it up preemptively, and that doesn't pair well with the fact this thing blows itself up two standby phases after activation. That's really weird. Um, this card simply wasn't good enough by itself already. And then they tack on this uh, self-destruction effect after two of your standby phases. Yeah, it makes it not very appealing. This card basically saw no play even in the Nordic decks that it was designed for. None of those uh, actually played this card even at a single copy. Next up, we have the first Solemn Counter Trap card, and that is Solemn Judgment. This was actually the first Solemn Counter Trap card, and a lot of people think of this card as simply saying no to the opponent, but it actually has a, a bit more nuancy to its effects. So when a monster would be summoned or a spell slash trap card is activated, pay half your life points, negate the summon or activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Uh, it is worth noting that this thing actually doesn't negate every single type of effect in the game. Most notably, this this thing actually doesn't negate any effects. It only negates summons and activations, which means if your opponent activates a hand trap, you can't hit that with Solemn Judgment. If your opponent activates a graveyard effect, you can't hit that with Solemn Judgment. That really makes it have a very narrow scope, not necessarily a bad card by any means. This card was extremely popular and uh, borderline overpowered when it was at three copies per deck, but this thing simply doesn't negate as many things as people uh, seem to think it uh, does. As someone who has has played in events recently when this card has been brought back to limited status a lot of people that I've played against actually don't read it and just flip it up when it activate a monster effect and uh, not realizing that you can't quite do that. Um, one thing that I do want to mention with this card compared to all the other Solemn cards, and we can notice that they learned their lesson when designing these types of cards, Solemn Judgment can always be activated. There's basically no drawback to it. I know that there's this kind of life points matter discussion right now, but in general, this card is so effective and the reason it was so good for many years is because you can always pay half your life points. It doesn't require a specific number to actually pay to activate this thing, which means that you can activate it turn one by paying 4,000, or you can activate it on turn 15 by paying 200, and it's better in both scenarios. It doesn't ever get bad, unlike a lot of the other Solemn cards, which when you draw them in conjunction, you can actually end up doing a ton of damage to yourself, so much in fact that you might be uh, in a position where you can't activate the other cards. However, with Solemn Judgment, you always can activate it, which gives it that really extra uh, flexibility for um, using this card in the later stages of the game, whereas many of these other Solemns, especially the next one we're looking at, only work on that turn one or turn 
and two. Speaking of the next card, we're going to look at Solemn Scolding. Now, this one actually does pretty much negate anything. So if this is the only set card in your spell and trap card zone, when a monster would be summoned or a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated, pay 3,000 life points, negate the summon or activation. And if you do, destroy that card. So there's two big things to note about this. Once again, this will not negate spell slash trap card effects, but it will negate monster effects and it will negate everything that Solemn Judgment does with the added benefit of also negating those monster effects. However, there are two major downsides of this. Uh, the first is obviously the life point cost. 3,000 is a lot. It is the most of any of the Solemn cards and that definitely does factor into this card being played. This card is not something you want to draw after turn one maybe you can draw it on turn two and you'll be okay but after that this card's basically useless and also yeah it has to be the only set card in your spell and trap card zone now this has been used a few ways this card has seen competitive play most notably in decks that don't play a lot of back row but one thing that's really interesting back in the day is that some people were playing this card in decks that played a, a regular sort of medium amount of back row and what they would do is they set scolding next to another piece of back row and they'd flip that other piece of back row and once you flip that other uh, card you have you can then activate the scolding and your opponent likely won't ever see it coming because they wouldn't have expected you to have this set next to something else. Um, this card though hasn't seen nearly as much play as any of the other Solemn trap cards, uh, at least the counter trap cards that is, but it has seen some competitive play. Uh, I think the, the most recent time this card has seen play is in the Necroz decks. It was really popular at defending your Jin opening. You could uh, set Solemn Scolding, your opponent basically had no out to that because it negates so many different cards. And then you can just gin lock your opponent for the win. Anyway, though, this card wasn't super popular, but it did see play and it obviously has uh, some of the most versatility in terms of what it negates out of all the Solemn cards. Moving on, though, we have the only Solemn card that is still played at three because it's at three right now, Solemn Strike. So while Solemn Judgment and the Solemn Warning, which we're going to talk about in a second, both those cards are limited and Solemn Scolding just simply isn't good enough to see play at three. So the only Solemn card counter trap card you're going to see played at three copies per deck right now is Solemn Strike and uh, for a good reason. This card is the most recent Solemn card release and it says when, an, when a monster's would be special summon or a monster effect is activated pay 1500 life points, negate the summon or activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Now, what can we learn from this card compared to the other cards? Why is this card um, better in some ways and worse in other ways? Obviously, it is unlimited, which means that Konami has basically deemed this card not as crazy as Solemn Judgment or Solemn Warning. Now, the reason this card isn't as insane is because it doesn't deal with spells and traps or their effects at all. It only deals with enhancement parent summons and monster effects and that is a pretty linear use. Now it is worth mentioning that the game has pretty much all but uh, avoided using the spells and trap cards. Pretty much all decks right now are going to be based on huge effect summons, huge effect monsters, that type of thing and uh, that makes Solemn Strike pretty darn effective but you can't use a Solemn Strike to negate your opponents evenly matched. You can't use a Solemn Strike to negate your opponents soul charge. It doesn't work that way. It's only good against those inherent special summons or the monster effects and uh, but the good news is this card only costs 1500 life points to use. In most cases this is going to mean that it's the least costly of all the Solemn cards. Yeah there's going to be those cases where you have less than 3000 life points and you activate Solemn Judgment and then you don't pay 1500 but in general, Solemn Strike is almost always going to be the one that you're paying the least amount for, which makes it pretty flexible, and it also makes it pretty safe as a three of. You can pretty much guarantee that in a given game, you'll actually have the opportunity to use three copies of Solemn Strike if you happen to draw all three in the first couple turns of the duel, which I think uh, makes it worth having a shout out to this card for being pretty much the only Solemn card besides Solemn Judgment that you could activate three copies of realistically without getting down to uh, crazy low amounts of life points. The last counter trap that we're going to look at is Solemn Warning, and this was Konami's first attempt at redoing Solemn Judgment. Um, this card came right after Solemn Judgment, and then came Solemn Scolding, and then came Solemn Strike, which means that 
solemn warning was meant to be the ways to fix solemn judgment. And one of the ways that they did this is make its life point cost a static 2000, which actually is a pretty big difference from solemn strike. If we think of activating three copies of this card, that would put you to just 2000 life points left, where with solemn strike, you'd have 3500. And that's a pretty significant difference. But anyway, what does this card negate? Well, it still does negate uh, spells and traps and monster effects, but they have to be uh, effects that special summon monsters. And the other thing that it negates is just any inherent summon. So basically, this card doesn't really stop every monster effect or every spell and trap card effect, but if that effect includes the effect to special summon a monster, like Soul Charge, like Monster Reborn, well then you can flip this up to negate and destroy it, and that's pretty good. It's also worth noting this card, just like Solemn Scolding and Solemn Judgment, but without as crazy of a life point cost, can negate normal summons, which Solemn Strike simply cannot, and that actually comes up way more often than you would think. Uh, I've lost way too many duels to having multiple copies of Solemn Strike face down, and my opponent just normal summons a big monster, and I simply can't deal with it because they keep hitting me direct with that life point. I think of a card like Thunder King or Inspector Border, and then by the time that it's hit, hit you so many times, now you don't have enough life points to use the Solemn Strikes that you have set. With Solemn Warning, you can simply negate that summon before it ever happens, and that uh, really helps you deal with those big normal summon monsters that don't have activated effects, but probably have continuous effects. Now, Solemn Warning made a huge impact when it was released. A lot of people actually were confused with what this card said. Some people, I know people at my local thought that you could just use this on any spell or trap card or monster effect, missing the part where it has to include the effect to special summon a monster. But I think by now that doesn't really come up too often. But Solemn Warning, incredible card currently limited. Uh, maybe it'll come back to semi-limited someday. I think Konami really wants to restrict this card just because it is so effective. Because nowadays, uh, just kind of like in what I said with Solemn Strike, where almost all the uh, the cards being activated nowadays are going to be special summoning monsters or their monster effects themselves. Solemn Warning not only uh, stops those monster effects and stops the, uh, the monsters from being summoned, but it also stops the spells and traps like Soul Charge and Monster Reborn, which makes it really, really powerful. Now the last card, we're going to round it out on one that maybe isn't so powerful only because it's the last one alphabetically, and that is Solemn Wishes. So this is a continuous trap card, a real old card, and uh, one that I bring up every once in a while as one of those uh, sort of do-nothing cards, and I think you can already understand my analysis on it, but we'll read it just in case you don't know what this card does. All it says is increase your life points by 500 points each time you draw a card or cards. Now you don't gain 500 for each card drawn, uh, Just it's just the 500 if you draw two at once, you just gain that 500, not 1000. This thing doesn't only work in your draw phase, it works in any phase, so if you activate something like Pot of Desires, you will gain 500 life points, and that is worth pointing out. But at the end of the day, I mean, I've talked about this card a number of times, it simply is way too slow with not enough of a payoff, and pretty much has never seen any competitive play and very little rogue play. Maybe it saw rogue play way long ago, but I think even then this card was never an optimal choice for pretty much any deck out there. Um, yeah, maybe some people played it in those fringe stall decks, but those decks didn't really do anything competitively. They only were good at the lunchroom and people didn't have spot removal, so it's not really worth mentioning that too much. Anyway though, that is going to wrap up my discussion on the Solemn cards. Yeah, there were some that weren't counter traps, but I think it's worth looking at those only because they do technically fall into the category of a Solemn trap card, even if they don't follow the sort of uh, general convention that the other four do. I will see you guys later though. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.